Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm back. Hello. So today I am sharing with you guys, you've probably guessed from the title, but I am sharing with you all the makeup that I packed for my two week trip to Europe that I took back at the end of May, beginning of June. And yeah, I mean, I know it's been a while since I've been on YouTube. Um, my Where Have I Been video um, should already be up by this point. Um, so if you guys haven't seen that, um, check right up here. And I definitely have a lot of videos coming. I've spent the past couple weeks rethinking of a lot of things and making some changes. So I'm excited to move forward with how I want my channel to be in the future. So, like I said, go watch that video if you didn't already. I'm sorry if you guys can hear the rattling in the background. My fridge is broken. There's a maintenance request in for it. Hopefully they can fix it soon. So, let's dive into my makeup bag, and this is my makeup bag. Now, right now it's currently bursting open. I could seal it shut, but I'm just feeling a little lazy. This is a Yumi Kim makeup bag. The only thing written on here is Yumi Kim right here in gold. Um, I got this in either a FabFitFun, I think a FabFitFun box is where I got this, and it's actually great. Um, I've talked about it before in how I travel with my makeup videos, um, but it's got two sections, so hold on. Obviously you guys just saw the giant bottom section, which is full of all of the um, makeup items. And then there's also a top section, which this is designed to outfit brushes. So I put the big giant face brushes here and the eye brushes go inside this little pocket here. And I usually always store my color switch and my lash curler there as well. Let us go ahead and dive into things. Now here's the thing, I feel like every time I do this video, it's the same 20 things in this bag. Really it is though, it's, it's the items that I put in this bag don't usually change too much because I kind of, you know, we've all got our favorites and we kind of stick with certain things, but I've been holding all these things in a bag here for two weeks and just pulling things out and putting them back in because I didn't want to forget what I freaking packed. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of lay them all out here. What? So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull things out that go together, like, you know, complexion, eyes, face, things like that. I'm gonna pull them out and show you one at a time the different things that I've brought so let me really quickly pause and I'll be right back once I've pulled all of it out. Okay guys so I'm going to start with the order that I would normally pack these in. So I brought two eyeshadow palettes with me on this trip and to be honest I really only needed one because I only used one. Now the first one that I brought was the Warrior palette by Juvia's Place. This is a great neutral palette. It's really great, really beautiful. I really love the shimmers in here. They are just so gorgeous and pigmented and... Um, so I did bring this, however, I didn't really use it because I was favoring instead the more matte makeup looks using my Dominique Cosmetics Latte Palette. This is, I think, now one of my Holy Grail palettes. It is definitely looking worse for wear. It's, it doesn't look so bad on camera, but it is a little beat up in here. Um, some of the DCs that are stamped into these eyeshadows are starting to fade, and there's a lot of eyeshadow everywhere. I loved this and I wore almost every color when I was traveling with the exception of espresso I think I think I wore all of them at least once so this was the go-to one I really like this palette it's perfect and I definitely have some more Dominique Cosmetics palettes but I wanted to just keep it more neutral for this trip because it technically was a work trip as well as for fun so I didn't want to you know do anything too wild and crazy out there. Now let's move on to primers. So I brought three primers with me. My usual one that I grabbed for the most part was going to be this, my Becca First Light Priming Filter, which this is almost out and empty. I'm gonna have to purchase a new one in the near future. But there's that. I also brought the Farsali Unicorn Essence. Now this I saved for more the, so the Becca was like my go-to every day when I was wearing makeup. This was really more for the big special occasion. There was a big welcome dinner with some people and also one to say goodbye at the end. 
and this was what I wore under my foundation to help it last. And then with both of those, I would mix the Tarte Clean Slate Smoothing Primer. I used this predominantly on my nose. Uh, and I really do like this primer. You do have to really work it in to make it work, but it is really nice and I like it. It also doesn't have much of a scent, which I like a lot because I feel like some primers have scents. I mean, this smells really strong, FYI. In terms of foundations, I have three foundations. Yes, I brought three. Yes, I wore that seems excessive for two weeks, but I wanted my options, okay? So the first one I have, and this is the one that I reach for the majority of the time, this is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Primer, or Primer Foundation, and this one's in the shade Porcelain. So this definitely matches me better in the winter. It was a little light for me now, but I'm kind of okay with it because I would mix it with one of these two. So this one is my Holy Grail Foundation. This is the Lancome Tint Edel Ultra 24 Hour Makeup in 100 Ivoire N, and that's the same shade for this one as well, which is the Lancome Tint Miracle. This is now hands down on my channel. I happen to just be flipping through like my analytics and stuff. This is my most viewed foundation video. It's got something like 5,000 views to it, and a lot of people always comment it saying, oh, you know, if you done it with this primer or this one, I'm, I'm well aware. I That was a first impressions video. First impressions are people's first glance at things. First impressions change all the time. Um, I really love that foundation. That's my second bottle of it now that I've purchased. So I obviously have no ill will towards that Lancome foundation. I actually like it a lot and I wear it a lot. I was typically mixing the Tarte one with the Tint Miracle. The other one, the Tandel Ultra, was more for those formal occasions where I needed the really full coverage look. Let's take a break from lips and talk about mascara really quickly. There's kind of two mascaras I've been using forever now and I still love them. I still use them. The first one is the Benefit Bad Gal Bang Mascara. This I use on the day-to-day -day basis. Really great. Builds them up, makes them look nice and long and somewhat thicker. Not really. And then the other one for the big woohoo, for the big all out moment, the glam moments. I added a coat of the Hourglass Caution Extreme Lash Mascara. I love this. I like pairing the two of them together because the other one gets nice and long and this one really builds up the volume of your lashes. I just really like this formula. Hourglass knocked it out of the park with this one. In terms of concealers, I had three that I brought along as well. And again, same thing. I really only used two of them and the third one kind of chilled on its own. I just really wanted to be prepared depending on how I wanted to do my makeup day to day, so I just wanted options. So the first one would be this, my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer in Chantilly. I love this concealer, it's a great concealer. Um, a little bit goes a very long way in terms of coverage, and this was usually the day to day one that I was wearing. Now if there were times where I needed something more full coverage or for the more glam look, I was doing a mixture of these. The first one's the Josie Marin Vibrancy Argon Oil Full Coverage Concealer Fluid. Now, this is really, this is a really great concealer. It's very full coverage. It does a really good job. It stays hydrated. It doesn't crease or deteriorate under my eyes. It works really well. It's just the wrong damn shade. This is the lightest one in the shade Fair, unless they've released a lighter shade since this was launched, which I really hope they have because they really need to expand their line in general. But I would love for them to have one in like the shade Porcelain where it's almost like white because then maybe I could mix them together and make a great shade for me and that's just so frustrating on so many levels. The last concealer is the Cover FX Power Play Concealer, which I'm actually wearing today. This is gotta be running out soon because I feel like I wear this all the time. Like, like literally all the time. I wish I could see in there how much is left, but it's gotta be, yeah, it's starting to run out soon. Um, but I love this. It's a great full coverage concealer. I actually use it for both my face and to prime my eyes for my eyeshadow. So I use it for a lot of different things and I really like it. It's a good color, good match, and it's a great shade range. So this is just amazing. Let's really quickly talk brows. Because I went a little crazy with brows. So I did bring my Benefit Bravo Conditioning Primer. I feel like it has been a minute since I've talked about this on my channel. I used to be obsessed with this conditioning primer. And, you know, when you don't use things for a while, you kind of forget about how awesome it is. And I had 
a backup in my drawer and I decided, you know what, I'm going to bring this, I'm going to get back into using this because it really helped my brows grow and, you know, I really do love this and I don't know why I stopped using it so I was really glad that I brought it with me to Europe so I got a chance to kind of dive back into using it and loving it and all the cool, cool things it does. I brought the same brow pencil but in two different shades. I brought the ABH Brow Wiz in both taupe and soft brown. Depending on how intense I want my brows to look today, I'm wearing the taupe brow pencil. So it's a little bit softer, a little bit ashier, but my hair will start to grow in it and it will start to look more ashy just because that is my natural hair color. It's like an ashy brown. Um, I tend to favor the taupe pencil over the soft brown, but sometimes, depending on the makeup look, you need stronger brows. I also brought two brow gels, again, depending on how full I wanted to go. I had the regular, this doesn't even have writing on it anymore because this has been so heavily used. This is the ABH Clear Brow Gel. This is my OG brow gel. It's amazing, it's great, it's wonderful. Nothing but fabulous things to say there. The other one is also ABH and it's their brand new Dip Brow Pomade. This one's in the shade Taupe. I really loved this for like the no brows brow day like i would just take this comb it through the front and then just kind of arrange the ends of my hair now when i did my first impression featuring this when i reviewed the riviera palette i'll link that video up here for you guys i kind of said you know what this is one where i would have to fill in the tail with the pencil and then go over everything with this and i do still stand by that statement you definitely if you're someone like me who's missing the tail ends of your brows you still want to use a pencil to fill in the tail of your brow that came out really weirdly spoken. But I did just kind of flick it through my brows just to give them a little bit more oomph on some days, usually the lighter makeup days. So it was nice to have on hand for that kind of thing. Now let's jump into like base things like um, powders and blushes and highlights and bronzers. I did bring my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder Palette. I do love this. I do always travel with this no makeup makeup days it was super helpful to have this to just dust two shades quickly into my crease easy simple still love this palette however many years later now that i have it i'm sure it's so not safe to be using especially with all the recent drama about makeup in the community just not touching that with a 10 foot pole um, I brought two bronzers. The first one was my NARS Laguna bronzer, but this is the Sun Diffused bronzer. Love this. So airbrushed and pretty and soft. Oof, I love it. The other one is the Bare Minerals Invisible Bronzer in Fair to Light. I think this is a very underrated bronzer, and I feel like I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. Now, maybe bronzer isn't everyone's thing. I get that. Some people are very into the contour. I'm not one of them. But this is just such a, it reminds me a lot. If you really want to try the Hourglass bronzers, I'd say take a look at this one, just because I feel like it's a pretty comparable feel. It is that baked almost formula, and it is very iridescent looking, similar to the Hourglass one. So check that out if you haven't already. In terms of highlights, I brought my two NARS highlighters. I love these. I have the Fort de France highlighter and the Capri highlighter, which to be honest, this is usually the one I wear. This one can look a little dark depending on the makeup I'm wearing. So I usually tend to go with the Capri highlighter instead. I brought two Clinique cheek pops for my blush. Um, the first one is the number 18 Pink Honey Pop. This was, you know, definitely for those sun flush, more look like you were just in the sun kind of makeup looks. And then there is my OG, oh lord, I almost jammed my whole finger into this and broke it. The number 5 Nude Pop. This is, as you can see, it is extremely well loved. There is no flower design still left in this. Like, if you compare this to this... Like, look at that. There's still, you can still see the circle in here, and along the outer edges, you can still see the petals, but it's definitely lost a lot of its... What makes me wonder is the fact that it looks like there's a spot underneath here. 
that it's starting to come unglued. I really hope it doesn't. I also brought two face powders. So the first one, just to kind of set makeup in general, was my Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. I love this. I think I've had this for almost a year now, and I do not regret purchasing this. This is amazing. I probably will be repurchasing this at some point in the future because it is like my favorite. I like it a lot more than the Laura Mercier one. And then the other one I brought kind of is also a foundation backup is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Light. And this is obviously a lot lighter than my skin is right now, but it worked really well to pair with the Lancome foundation that is just a tad too dark or too pink for me. It helps lighten it up. The setting spray I brought with me, I don't have anymore because it's officially empty. It was one of my MAC Fix Pluses. I've got a whole bunch of new ones, so we're all good there. But that's why I don't have a new foundation to show you. Or a new setting spray to show you. Or a, a setting spray to show you. God, my words are all jumbled today. But I do have the four lipsticks that I brought to Europe. Uh, the first one is the BH Cosmetics. These I'm going to swatch for you just to kind of give you an idea. This is the BH Cosmetics Liquid Lipstick in Tabitha. And this is just kind of a nice, light, almost bubblegummy kind of pink. Now, I never wore this on its own. It's just a little too pink for me and for my liking. Um, I usually paired it with something like this. This is the ABH Liquid Lipstick in Pure Hollywood which is just a little bit more of a nude pink. Then we have the two of the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Liquid Lipsticks in Hemp, which I love this one. This one's great. It's a great peachy kind of nude. See that there? That is peachy nude. Love it. And the other one in the shade Wake, which this is definitely more of a pink, but it is a little bit of a more subdued pink compared to the VH Cosmetics one. And there's that there. Okay. So that's it. That is all the makeup I brought with me to Europe. If you guys are interested, I'd be more than happy to try recreating some of the looks that I wore when I was in Europe. They're very easy, very simple. Um, but yeah, I think it might be fun to redo one of those for you guys to see kind of what kind of makeup I do when I'm traveling, especially since this was a combination work personal travel event, it's kind of helpful to see how I did makeup that was good for when I was doing business and then makeup when I was switching over to being on my own. So yeah. And I might show you guys some pictures and things from my tour. I might do a travel video on it. I don't really know. I tried to make like a vlog, but to be honest, I got kind of wrapped up in my work when I was there. So I kind of failed a little. That is everything. So if you guys aren't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And I think that's everything. Yeah, that's everything. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys. Look, whoa, shit. Hi. Do you want to be in the video? Oh, of course you do. The next, the last concealer. Mm -mm -mm. Hourglass caution. Hourglass. A rush. The um here. How about I put that there? Oh, that? And that. And you can sleep right there. How's that? Does that work for you, Addy? Yeah, right there. What a good boy. The third one was my Cover FX Power Plate Concealer, which is the one I almost hit myself in the face. Baby, I don't have time to be loving on you right now. Can we like let mama film her video and then maybe afterwards we can have some major snuggles. I'm not used to wearing eyelashes, it's been so long. Because then I could mix it with this and make a good shade for me. Why am I so yawny? 
And what am I saying?